What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. The T-Biz Podcast delivers T-News that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Tea nourishes and inspires. It is an ancient plant-based medicine that simultaneously heals and energizes the body as it soothes the mind. Making fine tea is a blend of artistry and craftsmanship. The $200 billion tea trade is fundamentally local, yet exerts global influence employing millions to enhance the well-being of all. Hello, everyone. Here are this week's headlines. Escalation of conflict in the Middle East is dimming the tea shipping outlook. Bubble tea brands line up for IPOs in China. And police recover a stolen gold matcha bowl Valued at 10 million yen. Plus, coffee versus tea. The Specialty Coffee Association's annual exposition in Chicago last week attracted more than a dozen tea exhibitors and featured several expert presentations on tea. While most consumers visit grocery and department stores to purchase tea, coffee shops and cafes are the second most popular retail outlets by value. More than 38,400 branded coffee ships in the United States and 42,800 in Europe generate 10 to 20% of their beverage revenue from specialty tea. In this episode, T-Biz narrates the highlights of a talk by young Ma Kim, the principal scientist at Finlay's. In his presentation, Kim compares coffee and tea, the world's most popular caffeinated beverages, with useful insights on distribution, markets, and relative health benefits. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Keilani Valley, Telawakili, Bogawanthalawa, Harana, and Eliptia Tea Estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. The first deaths of crew members and the escalation of aerial combat between Iran and Israel dim hopes for the resumption of tea shipments via the Suez Canal. Premiums remain high but are stable as insurance provider Lloyd's assesses the potential closure of the Strait of Hormuz following Iran's seizure of the MSC Ares, a 14,300 TEU container ship owned by a U.S. ship owner. Scheduled disruptions have slowed growth at British and North Sea ports in Rotterdam, Bremen, and Hamburg, which lands most of Europe's tea. As longer transits reduce availability, charter rates for containers increase. In February, due to Red Sea disruptions, freight rates to Europe from India doubled. Europe is India's second largest export destination. Drury's World Container Index was $2,795 U.S. dollars for a 40-foot container last week, up 64% from the same week 
during the previous year. Rates are 97% higher than the 2009 pre-pandemic average of $1,420. Transatlantic rates remain stable. Routing around Africa adds 10 to 14 days at sea for tea arriving from Asia, Africa, and tea producers in India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal. UK blenders and grocers importing packaged tea report some shortages. Half of the UK's tea imports are sourced in Kenya and India. The only bright spot is that oil prices remain flat. The U.S. Central Command says its forces successfully engaged two unmanned aerial vehicles in areas controlled by Iranian-backed Houthis this week without damage to U.S. ships, coalition, or commercial traffic. The March 6 deaths of three sailors on board the Barbados flag cargo ship True Confidence off the coast of southern Yemen followed the March 3 sinking of what well, carrier struck in February in the Gulf of Aden. Since October 2023, the Houthis have attacked ships transiting the Red Sea on more than 60 occasions. Business Insight The Economist Intelligence Unit lists conflict in the Middle East as one of five high-impact threats to business worldwide citing risks associated with disruptions to the region's maritime shipping routes and global terrorist activities perpetrated by non-state actors. Quote, In an already tight oil market, disruption to oil production and shipping from the Middle East would increase international oil prices significantly, further prolonging cost-of-living pressures, particularly for oil-importing emerging economies. A regional conflict in the Middle East would also draw in external powers, potentially exacerbating tensions between the U.S. and its allies on the one hand, and China and Russia on the other. End quote. The market for freshly made bubble tea will reach 200 billion renminbi in 2025, according to the China chain store. And franchise Association. An estimated 486,000 bubble tea stores saw an increase of 40% in annual sales last year to reach a market size of 145 billion renminbi. Ten new style tea brands dominate the market, with uh, leader Misha operating 36,000 shops. Guming and Cha Panda, Anti Tea Jenny and Wai Tang, each have between 5,000 and 10,000 outlets. The Financial Times writes that Cha Panda's 7,900 stores will soon be listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. It will be the second bubble tea chain to go public following Nayuki in June of 2021. Nayuki was valued at 29.2 billion Hong Kong dollars with a share price of 17.04. According to the Hong Kong Index, it is currently trading at 2.6, down 85% since the initial offering. Trump Panda is seeking 2.6 billion Hong Kong dollars, about 330 million U.S. Founded in 2008, it is the third largest of the new style tea ventures. Guming currently operates 9,000 outlets. Cha Panda and Guming typically price their drinks at about 20 renminbi, while Misha sells its tea at half that price. Several competing firms, including Ante Tea Jenny and Cha Ji, Cha Bai Dao, have recently announced IPOs. Misha Ming Cheng filed an IPO application with the Hong Kong Index in January 2024. The company is seeking 500 million U.S. dollars. In 2022, Misha announced plans to list on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, seeking about 6.5 billion renminbi, which would have been 910 million U.S. dollars. But no official announcements followed. Quote, Bubble tea is one of the few bright spots on the consumer front in China, with low-priced operators 
doing particularly well, end quote, according to NASDAQ News and Insights. Ben Cavender, managing director at China Market Research Group, told NASDAQ, quote, whoever can IPO the fastest and get to a stable operating position may be the winner over the long term, end quote. Tokyo police have successfully recovered a 24-karat gold matcha tea bowl stolen on April 11th from a Japanese department store. Police on Saturday arrested a man suspected of stealing the engraved bowl priced at 10.4 million yen, about 65,000 U.S. dollars. The 380-gram bowl was confiscated on April 15th from a Taito secondhand shop that had paid a Koto Ward antique dealer 4 million yen. The Koto Ward shop had paid 1.8 million to Masuro Hori, a 32-year-old from Tokyo's Kyoto Ward on the day of the heist. Dealers are required to submit a payment declaration to the Office of Taxes for any gold valued at 2 million or greater. Surveillance video shows a man slipping the bowl, which was displayed in an acrylic display case, into his backpack. Hori later admitted to committing the crime, saying that he was in debt. The exhibition featured more than 1,000 gold items, including a 38 million yen six-foot-tall dragon covered in 3,000 sheets of gold leaf. The bowl is the work of Kuchi Ishikawa, a third-generation goldsmith who won the prestigious Tokyo Governor's Award in 1988. Next, Arvinda Anantharaman in Bengaluru reports on this week's India Tea News. India Tea News for the week ending April 19th, 2024. Quiet week here. In top news, uh, Ikram Singh Gulia, Managing Director and CEO of the Amalgamated Plantations Private Limited, has uh, resigned. He will leave the company with the back to June 2024. This makes him the second head of a tea corporation resigning this year after Atul Astana's exit from the Goodrick Group. The Amalgamated Plantations Board is appointed. Sukjit Singh Malhotra. He's currently Vice President PSO at Tata Consumer Products as full-time director and CEO designate from April 9, 2024. The Amalgamated Plantations is the second largest tea producer in India, owning 25 estates in Assam and the Duars and producing 40 million kilos of tea annually. In other news, all eyes are on weather this season. There's a prolonged drought from October to March in North India, which has impacted tea crop. First flash picking began in late March, and although rains have begun, crop is still in low quantity, is being seen in Darjeeling and also in Kangra. The weight ocean of Tokti says quality has been good and better than in recent years thanks to the slow growth and the lack of rain. In Kangra too, volume has been imp- um, impacted, but the tea quality is up. At the moment the first flash verdict is low crop, but good quality sweet teas better than in recent years. How the market responds to it is to be seen. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hello, I'm Bogdan, a passionate tea drinker and the inventor of the ultimate tea machine, the Brewmaker One. Preparation is key to making fine tea. Sequential steepings deliver the best taste possible and unlock the true value of whole leaf teas and botanicals. Brew automates that process without using any pots or capsules. This simple to operate smartphone control device stores steeping profiles to consistently make great tea at the push of a button. Brew also reduces time, waste and energy. That's because I engineered the brew to remember control settings for temperature, brewing time and quantity. Using my patented process lets you stack steep, simply, and conveniently. Coffee versus Tea The Specialty Coffee Association's annual exposition in Chicago last week attracted more than a dozen tea exhibitors and featured several expert presentations on tea. 
While most consumers visit grocery and department stores to purchase tea, coffee shops and cafes are the second most popular retail outlets by value. More than 38,400 branded coffee ships in the United States and 42,800 in Europe generate 10 to 20% of their beverage revenue from specialty tea. In this episode, T-Biz narrates the highlights of a talk by young Ma Kim, the principal scientist at Finlay's. In his presentation, Kim compares coffee and tea, the world's most popular caffeinated beverages, with useful insights on distribution, markets, and relative health benefits. Youngmook Tim, a PhD, is the principal scientist of advanced analytical sensory science processing research and processing improvement at Finlay's. He joined the company in 2019 after 10 years as a senior research scientist at Synergy Flavors. Kim, who works at the Finlay's office in Rhode Island, has studied tea and coffee for the past 16 years. In this talk, he describes the distribution, markets, and health benefits associated with the two beverages. All right, so what is divided? Okay, for non alcoholic beverage drinkers, what is divided? Okay. So we find the way in line here. Boom! I can go one like right here. Boom. So left side. So North America, South America, and mostly uh, European countries. So coffee is more popular. And here, Asian countries and the South of African countries and Australia. Yes, tea is more popular. So world is unfortunately divided. Okay, slightly fair. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, global uh, beverage, non-alcoholic beverage market. So here, tea is clear winner. So overall in the world, people drink more tea over coffee. But if we're talking about uh, U.S. market, sorry, U.S. beverage market, coffee is clear winner. So definitely, United States is a coffee nation. So I want to talk about it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about market in the United States. So mostly these guys, bar and I. So tea gained a huge popularity in companions, thus requesting in flavor and as a healthy choice. So traditional tea market including uh, loose tea leaves and hip tea bags. So those traditional tea market increased by three times for 20 years. So red the tea market, like these guys, so bar tea and then uh, iced tea in restaurants. So red the tea market increased by 38 times for the same period of time. So that makes tea the seventh most, most popular type of beverage in the United States after juice, coffee, milk, beer, soft drink, <laughs> and water. Okay? So tea is getting more popular in so like a moving to the next question. Well, about 75% of tea consumed in the world, that's black tea. But this trend is a little bit, no, even more extreme in the United States. About 90% of tea consumed in the United States, that's black tea. So black tea is extremely popular. Okay? About 75 to 80% of tea consumed in the United States. For Americans, no, that's like the iced tea in restaurants or bars of tea. Okay, 75 to 80 percent of uh, drink is cold drink. That is why red tea market increased much faster than traditional party market. That is why black tea is a lot more popular in the United States. I mean, okay, the question is, okay, why green tea is not popular in the United States? Because Americans do not like green tea's leafy and fresh flavor. Think about that. At cold temperature, green tea's leafy flavor is even worse. It's like, you know, taste, smell like swamp, okay? <laughs> so, green tea is not popular at all, okay? Think about black tea, no problem. At temperature, cold temperature, there is no fresh liquid flavor at all, okay? So that is why black tea is fully popular. Okay, so that was brief introduction. After describing the great divide between coffee and tea drinking nations, Kim explained the processing and chemical makeup of tea. So, roasting is the art, so I want to say it's the art of science. 
campaign, the single most important comfort for both tea and coffee. So I'm going to come back uh, to this discuss a little later. Okay, so next one is sugar. Okay, if we talk about simple sugar, okay, the amount is like you know, tea has a little more or the amount thing. But this is not it. Before we send this to uh, carbohydrate polymers to each sugar, so coffee is clear, you know. That, that is why coffee can use this sugar, okay, during a uh, roast process. This sugar is being used to develop coffee's uh, unique flavor and then appear that taste. And then, uh, as more, coffee has more protein, okay, then tea and then liquid. Yeah, for sure, if we produce coffee and tea, yeah, we see more liquid flowing along the top. And the last one, this is another important topic, okay? So I want to talk about polyphenol compound. So main polyphenol is frozen against here up to 10%, and main polyphenols, keratin and some others, they are, in most green tea and black, they are up to 40%, okay? So again, after campaign, I will come back to this uh, discuss video later. Very good, trust me. Okay, so second comparison, okay? How coffee means and tea leaves are made? Okay, so you go ahead and pick up the tea leaf. Oh, it's not tea. That's just tea leaf. Okay, that is not tea yet. Okay, and the different thing there, right? Pick up cherry. It's not coffee, right? Has to go through. Yeah, that's all other process, but you know, the most important part of the process. Okay, so just so, so like that, most important part of uh, tea making process is fermentation. So I'm going to talk about that. So through the whole body, it's not made with one. Same raw material, which is camellia since tea leaf. So once again, real teas are made with only this tea leaf, camellia senses. Okay, teas are not made with this camellia since tea leaf. So something like mint, peppermint, chamomile, they are not tea, they are over. Okay, so they cannot be called tea, they need to be called over. Okay, so tea made with this camellia sensitive tea leaf. Let me start with white tea. White tea is made with young tea leaf and dry flavor. That's white tea. And the green tea is also made with carbon essential tea leaf, for sure, and made with mature tea leaf, and then uh, it's dry flavor. Okay? The difference between this white tea, green tea is either made with young tea leaf or mature tea leaf. After harvesting, both teas are uh, go through this uh, either steaming or pan fire heating process to inactivate the enzyme to the polyphenol oxidase to prevent the oxidative fermentation, okay? So those teas are the dry start fermented teas. But oolong tea is different, okay? Oolong tea is made with water tea leaf and goes through the fermentation process, and then black tea is staking so far, mature tea leaf and goes through the fermentation process. So we start between oolong and black, that is the degree of fermentation, okay? So when tea is partially fermented, I mean when the degree of fermentation is between 10 and 80 percent, we say that tea is only partially fermented, now it is called oolong tea. And when tea is fermented about 80 percent, it is fully fermented tea. Now that is called black tea. Okay? So those teas are from the same material but depending on the processing. Yeah, we have four teas so far, but there is one more tea. So some black teas undergo additional aging process, just like wine and whiskey are uh, always better, okay? So that tea is called tea. okay? So the aging process is up to, from a couple years, even up to like a, a couple hundred years, okay? Always better, and you just say, this is the most different type of tea, okay? So those five teas are made with one same raw material. Fermentation develops the flavor of tea, explains Kim, but coffee roasting generates an entirely different taste profile. So, roasting is the art, science is the art of science. You know what it is. But I want to focus more about the uh, taste change during roasting process. Okay? So, overall, during roasting, bitterness increase and then acidity decrease. Okay? So, there is one uh, main reason for this bitterness increase and acidity decrease. That's Protein is the main polyphenol compound strategy. Okay, protein is. Let's take a look at why. Okay, so very simple. So, carbonic acid in green bean, okay, it's soft and sour, very sour, and then by roasting process, it becomes protein is lactose. Okay, it's bitter. Okay, so sourness increases, 
and we don't need to increase during one week. But that's good, okay? That's a good reaction. So again, close the negative become close the negative lockdown, so it's either, but sometimes it's better. But if too much heat is added, so either the lockdown will become fendering day, okay? Still bitter, but it's harshly bitter, okay? That is why too much heat makes the coffee like harshly bitter, unpleasantly bitter. Okay, so actually, so two main organic acid in coffee, which is citric acid and malic acid, they decrease during roasting, okay? So S3 going down. So again, the proteolic acid, different variety. They all going down, was either degraded by heat or it transformed into a protein slot. So as the blood during roasting. So high roasted bean has less S3. So how about aspirin tea? So I already talked about bitterness, right? Bitterness, yeah. higher bitterness in green tea and lower bitterness in uh, black tea because of uh, fermentation. And of course, because of fermentation, so black tea has uh, more acid. So during fermentation, the sugars are metabolized into organic acid, and then other organic acid is also cleaved, okay, during fermentation process. So this black tea has more uh, acid than Caffeine is the unifying component that drives sales of both coffee and tea. Kim explains that while tea contains more caffeine per pound than coffee, tea drinkers actually consume less per cup. So, as Congress started, I came back to this. The single most important compound is tea and coffee, caffeine. So, start with the coffee, uh, caffeine, and tea. So caffeine is the most popular central nervous system in the world. So about 90% of adults in the United States consume caffeine daily. And then once again, so tea contains a lot of caffeine. So about 2.5% of caffeine by dry water. So when I ask, you know, like my audience, okay, hey, well, this tea has more caffeine, black or pink. Okay, when I ask that, like a most of folks that black has more. That's common knowledge. So when I just go to Google and then just type which thing has more campaign, and this is the uh, information I can easily get from the web. Okay? That blue coffee has more campaign than black tea, and black tea has more campaign than green tea. Okay? This is common knowledge. Okay? But let's think about this. I have chili, fresh chili, and to make green tea. Okay? This Tea leaf simply dry. Now I have green tea. To make black tea, this tea leaf goes through fermentation process. Now I have black tea. Okay? So the only difference green and black is fermentation process. So if there is more caffeine in black tea, that means caffeine should be generated during the fermentation process, right? Right? So I decided to figure that out. So I set up this experimental plant right over here. So I got fresh cup tea leaf. Okay, and some of them uh, did not uh, ferment at all, and some of them were fermented for 20, 40, 60, 80 percent. And then after each fermentation, they were removed, and then I determined the caffeine, okay, in two samples. So, if caffeine is generated during fermentation, then leave, I will have crap like that. Because more fermentation will give me more caffeine, right? Okay? So, this is a meter. So what happened? <laughs> caffeine actually degrades during fermentation by the uh, natural enzyme heat last day, okay? To degrade. So, green tea has more caffeine than black tea, okay? That is critical. So why we see something like, you know, the, uh, this kind of information, okay? So, at least in the United States, you know, there is no domestic tea growing, okay? So there is no way yeah, I, I did it when I was in Korea. So, there is no way you know, that we can put this uh, uh, something like that. So, when people do this, go ahead and buy, like, you know, like, uh, Ipung black tea, and then, or, like, you know, like, uh, what, uh, Pazo green tea, or whatever, different brand, and then, you know, uh, measure the cafe normal. That is not fair compared, right? Without, you know, harvesting region, harvesting time, how they process, the what's the degree of fermentation, or whatever. Without those kind of uh, conditions, 
this is not meaningful compared to gain. And that is why we see this kind of uh, misinformation. Okay, very easy, right? Uh, when we talk about coffee and uh, caffeine, because caffeine is very, very stable compound, okay? Very deep resistance. So from here, uh, light and then like a dark source. And caffeine actually does not change. So it looks like a little bit increased, but we know why, right? Because the moisture is lost during those two process, okay? But basically, caffeine is not changing during those two process. Okay, so now I want to compare the cafe in coffee and tea. Okay, so this is USDA data. So, okay, coffee prepared with pepper and then black tea prepared with pepper. Okay, so per cup, so there is 40 milligrams of cafe in coffee and then 20 milligrams of cafe in a cup of black tea. So, this is two statement. Coffee has more cafe than tea. When we talk about the cup, okay? How about the raw material? So I mentioned this like three, four times already, but she has more caffeine, okay? About three, four percent, and then, then coffee. One to end, one to end, okay? okay? When we talk about raw material, then why how do you have to have to in the cup of tea? They want to do that, right? Because we can get only 30 servings from one pound of coffee. But from one pound of tea, we can get 226 servings. And finally, what is the unifying benefit of coffee and tea? So the definition of an antioxidant is prevention of oxidation. Okay? So to understand the antioxidant, we need to understand oxidation first. Okay? So I will start with oxidation. So I will tell you what oxidation is first. So here. So it all starts with the oxygen, okay? So oxygen, we need the oxygen to breathe and then to survive, right? We have to breathe. So here are oxygen molecules, usually O2, okay? Two oxygen molecules with 16 electrons, okay? That's the oxygen. So oxygen is usually pretty stable, okay? Here, oxygen here, and the oxygen in my body, very stable. But when oxygen is exposed to some external factors, oxygen loses to one or more electrons, okay? So when oxygen is exposed to some external factors like uh, radiation, uh, poison, poisonous food, cigarette smoking, UV light exposure, water and air pollution, and uh, excessive sunlight, excessive exercise, and by normal human breath. Okay. So what I mean here is okay. So we have oxygen in my body, right? In our body, for sure. And after we walk, then oxygen in our body will be exposed to cigarette smoking, right? Then oxygen in my body will be stressed and we lose one or more electrons, okay, as an example. After that, oxygen is not oxygen anymore. Now it is called free radical, okay? I'm pretty sure you guys have heard that. So the problem with this free radical is, free radical is extremely reactive and always want to be normal, okay? So free radicals start stealing electrons from other normal cells in your body. So after losing electrons, of course, your cells get damaged and we start to burn out, okay? And here's another problem. It's David is there, start acting just like free radical and want to be normal, okay? Ah, I need electron, okay? I want to be normal. So start killing again electron from other normal cells in your body, okay? They feed the protein and DNA. After losing electrons, of course, they will get damaged and start bar function. This reaction is called oxidation, low of electrons. That's oxidation, okay? Different speaking, low of electrons, that's oxidation. So once this oxidation happens uh, in metal, like the iron, rose tea will occur. What is the intense in fruit and vegetable? Then turn from oxidation from it. What if this happens in our body for a long period of time? What's going to happen? Even in this natural disease, including two biggest killers of Americans, cancer and heart disease. What if we human body receives cumulative days for a long period of time? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, what's going to happen? We will get aging. We are getting old because of our stage. So according to World Forward Aging Research, Dr. Hall said that in NIH, aging is a disease. The human life can simply reflect the level of free and damage that accumulates in cells. When 
enough damage of village cells can survive properly anymore and they just keep up. Okay? So this is why we are we look older than 10, 20 years of clock space. Not just you how about book? When you go 50 years old book, because of us, it looks old. How about building? 50 year, 10 year look building? What? Because of us. Okay? Let's think about human a little bit more. Okay? So, like people live like longer than 100 years. Where do they live? New York City? No. They live like a mountain area, right? <laughs> With clean air. Okay? Uh, what do you like? Free air. Okay? Clean air. That's, that's very important. So I pretty pretty measure here, right? So here, who you like to even generated by normal human being. So that means if you inhale 100 percent of oxygen, about 15 percent of this air is going to be free light. So here we sit here and we are all free light generators. <laughs> okay. So put work on please again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ventilation, okay? So yeah, so like uh, even though like you sit in your room and uh, oh yeah, so for some here, for by myself, there is click door. You're killing yourself, okay? So proper ventilation is very important. So let's think about that. Like you go to like a auditorium, big stadium, and then like uh, you are uh, with like a uh, ten thousand other people, okay? So at the beginning it's fine, but you feel suddenly like you know later, like uh, like heavy, you know, feel not that anymore, right? Because the air is contained by humans. Okay? <laughs> we are in danger. Push him the cuts everywhere, right? It's good. Alright? <laughs> ah, but let's not worry about that too much because we have our entire food and thousand. And so sense come here to boom and to make the work here and here and then uh, repair the damage and stop their reaction immediately and then all is stop. Repair and then you know like uh, repair and then stop their reaction. Okay, top access immediately. So why is the decrease of antioxidant? Gain of electron. Okay? Growth of electron oxidation, gain of electron antioxidant. So this is uh, antioxidant delayed electron, okay, is stop everything by oxidation. So your mom was right. What did your mom say? Okay, alright, so that's very good. But I want to go on tea and coffee. So generally speaking, tea offers more health benefit than coffee. Boom, for it. Okay, so then uh, how can I drink my cup of tea and coffee healthier? So if you add milk to your tea or coffee, okay, my suggestion is don't do it because the milk protein and the follicles they bind to each other and they, they lose their whole bioavailability. Okay, so you will lose all that benefit if you add clear. Don't do it. If the purpose of drinking is your health, don't do that. How about sugar? The sugars do not work with any personal compound in your beverage. But still sugar and sugar, so that's up to you. And then, so if you add lemon juice to your tea, totally good. Okay, first of all, lemon is very good, let's go for you. And then the lemon, like a lower pH, and it will make like this uh, character of endocrine compound more stable. So as a result, you know, your apple to make so your body will have to more antioxidants by doing that. Okay? So hold it. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of T-Biz journalists and tea experts? Remember to visit the T-Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate mega stores, led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall credit card bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill. 
Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.